Ow! Ow! This is the Jim and Terry Show, howling at you from the Mojave Dole Studio, Bob Cajun. I'm Terry. I'm Jim. I'm... I am the wolf man. How? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the old radio show, I forget who, and... Wolf, Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. And then I'm thinking also of uh, uh, Michael Fox. And uh, Michael J. Fox played at I Was a Teenage Werewolf. Teenage Werewolf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. How does all this connecting? Well, this could have been this could have been a, like a Halloween show then. We could have. We, but we, that's not what we mean well, by Halloween. Well, last week we did not meet, but we are here now. So let's catch up on Halloween and Howling Good Times. Okay. Okay. I thought we were talking about Yellowstone, but that should get Let's go it. with Yellowstone. Well, I don't care which way you go. <laughs> okay, let's start with don't Yellowstone. Don't ask me to do anything. I, I sent Jim a video <laughs> because one of the things I enjoy on social media is people who post interesting stuff. This was, I think, from National Geographic, but correct me if I'm wrong. But I saw it, and I liked it, and I thought... You would like it too, and since you were just getting your head cleared from all the pressures of your album production, this would ground your soul. It was, uh, it was, it was catchy because the miracle of the wolves or something, and they started off by saying, "Well, they killed all off." I went, "All right, where are we going with this?" But it turned out really quite wonderful. So I like how they did it. Yeah, you know, they, I, they, the, the, I do on like one the hand, you're thinking, "We've got like some species getting eliminated because of the wolves. How's this good?" But wow, when you see how nature balances uh, balances out uh, things, wow. I'm not sure when. Did you get the date on when the program started? It was reintroducing oh, 14 wolves yeah, into Yeah, but that was, that was like 96 or something. Yeah, like, I, was, I don't know. Was I was going to say it was in the mid-80s. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, maybe was, mid-80s. Maybe. maybe. It's, so it's taken a long time. This is now 30-some-odd years yeah. to see the... The results of introducing the impact of reduce of introducing back into the ecosystem of Yellowstone. What National happened to Park. them in the first place? Slaughtered. Oh, just slaughtered yeah. because they were eating cattle and stuff. Or? Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. want them around. So hunted to the point of extinction, so they no longer existed in that area. And now the Man. program was to say, we got to do something about it. What would happen if now? What if? It didn't work out this way. I have questions about that, but it did work out. So let's go through the sequence. They were introduced, and they started to do what wolves do. They hunt. They packs. hunted, yeah. And who were their targets? Uh, rabbits, wasn't it? No. What was what was their... The deer first? Yeah, the deer. They started, they, they, they started on the deer, which they didn't eliminate them, but they started hunting the deer, thinning out the deers. And because they thinned out the deer... Foliage started to grow, like uh, the stuff that the deer would normally nibble to death. Nibble to death started growing. So not only did it grow, it grow, grew right up to the riverbanks, covered the riverbanks, stopped erosion. And so in stopping erosion, left puddles of fresh water, you know, I guess when the, when it, after rains and stuff. And that started life blooming. Water started to be retained it didn't run off didn't run off and uh oh jeepers everything and uh, yeah. beavers came back and started building dams in the rivers and the creeks and they exploded into pools of water and, yeah. and with more water came more birds and water fowl yeah and yeah and and that it just turned into an absolute success story unbelievable biodiversity and, in the yellowstone national park all because of the introduction and i, I don't know if you could can you connect it as succinctly as they did, dot, 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 from wolf to deer to flowers to water to beavers to predators to bunnies to... Well, know. somebody must have known. Somebody must have known or you wouldn't have taken all that because I don't know if the Canadian connection was they brought them down from, from Canada, Canada. Yeah, from and, and to reintroduce them into an area that they were yeah. uh, uh, been extinct. driven out of or is extinct. And they must have known that certain things were happening because there were no wolves. And I guess you know that by seeing other places where there are wolves. 
And you go, well, why? Is, oh, what's missing in this yeah. natural uh, ecosystem? Yes. Well, there's no wolves in, the, in, in Yellowstone anymore. So they brought, it was only like 19 or something. I don't 14. know how many. 14 wolves. They brought them back and they did what wolves do and most species do. They reproduced and they immediately started killing the deer and uh, eating them. I mean, they don't just kill them and top, chop the heads off no. and put them in their dens. No, not they like eat people. them. It's food. Yeah. yeah. But the other lesson there is the things that man do by <clears throat> just killing all the buffaloes or yeah. killing all the, you know, uh, and I'm sure the buffalo kill off in the prairies and that probably resulted in maybe some of the uh, 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 some of the properties turning to sand instead of being fertilized right. property with all the dung from the bison and bulls and everything. So, yeah, we got to watch what we're doing as yeah. a... Sp- so there's a happy ending um, to that story. Well, the happy ending is also, oh, little man, because the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, wreck things enough, <laughs> then we're going to be wrecked, and then it'll all come back, in my opinion. But uh, we might not be there to enjoy At our it. age and stage, you feel like a wreck most of the time anyway. <laughs> We've been wrecked through our lives, our life choices. Yeah, so there's a happy ending story. And that was, again, something I picked up on the social media and shared it with you because it was a tale of something good coming of something that we thought we understood, but now we understand a lot more and a a lot more detail. So good for... uh, who would be the scientist involved? Biologist would certainly be involved. I, I don't know. Um, would you have botanists, people who study plants? Well, I think it would have been a collaboration for sure. Of Between it, many disciplines. What, what is this going to happen? What's going to happen if we do this? It's only experiment. Maybe we're going to have to kill all the wolves off again if it doesn't work. But it worked beautifully. And so moral of the story is I think um, Scarborough, we need to bring wolves in. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need zombies in Scarborough. <laughs> I think we need to do some zombie stuff. There. I was born and raised all in right. Scarborough, all my Scarberian friends. Oh, your Scarborough. That used to be my stomping grounds, too, down at uh, Victoria Park and Eglinton area. Oh, yeah. Lived there for a number of years. Um, okay, so that was just to say there's some good stuff on social media. But then there's some crazy stuff on social media, too. Terry's and, got a, uh, a, like a book here. I've got my my records, but I I, I showed you the, this thing here. Oh this my is, goodness! This is my conspiracy theory uh, whiteboard. Holy I wish it was macro. a smart board, but it's not. But it's funny, you know. I I mentioned that since Elon Musk purchased Twitter, that there's a seems to be a lot more crazies, and by crazies I mean QAnoners. I mean. People who are COVID deniers, vaccine hoaxers, uh, you name it, all that crazy stuff seem to be on there. And that became more obvious to me as I watched coverage of the Ottawa protest, the Emergencies Act inquiry, which is supposed to be going on to make sense of what did go on that we didn't know. And can we find out the whole story? Just like the January 6th commission is supposed to investigate and tell us, What really did go on behind the scenes? All the stuff that we didn't know? There's a lot more detail coming out. Yeah, I don't know how much we will get because we remember the inquiry into the alien thing and what a joke that was. (laughs) So, you know. (laughs) Let me get this right. You're putting alien investigations with the trucker convoy in Ottawa with the January 6th commission. Okay, one of these things does not fit with the others. These things that don't belong together. (laughs) Well, all I'm saying is if, if, if certain people... Like with the alien one, everything that was good that we really wanted to hear why we tuned yes. in was yeah. behind closed doors. They basically said it right to our face. Oh, this is for the closed session. Mm-hmm. And that's why all the seats were empty. The people were waiting, who were waiting the guests the, yep. were going to go into the closed session. So I don't know how much the inquiries, where they're stopping, like where they stop, where they go into. I, I don't know. And I'm not going to take the time to figure it out. Um but I, on the other hand, I can see why it was needed. You know, yeah, investigate it, see if it was overkill. It it may have been. You know, like the same as they say that Ford is overkill. Like I liked what Ford did until I heard today coming here, someone saying, "Well, it would have been way easier if they just had a put in a work to rule. Uh, uh, everything would have been solved." Uh, work to rule from a teacher's perspective doesn't really accomplish that much. It's great because we do a lot of extra work that we're not clocked for or paid for but my point being 
you could do that, mm-hmm. and it would be delayed and tangled up in courts. Uh, at least the kids would be back in school. They wouldn't yes. have to be out of school. Yes. So what I'm saying is I, th- I thought this thing, well, yeah, maybe, but then someone else said, but if he had done this, and I think, well, this was a more moderate way of doing it, do the work to uh, uh, the back-to-work legislation. That would be a, a, a more moderate, more palatable way of doing it. So was it overkill on Ford? Probably. You know, and it might have been overkill on Trudeau, too. At the time, I supported Trudeau's call. We'll get to that in another subsequent oh, another podcast one. because there's a lot more to uncover. How did we get from, like, I don't know, Jim. Coyotes to You're that. responsible for this. Oh.